morning students thank you to all of you who took your test on friday it was due yesterday and i looked at the results and our average for every class was above an 80 percent so really awesome job to all of you um i just want to say that i am really proud of us all for learning the entire unit six thermal energy online um, it, I know it wasn't easy, but we got through it, and now we're ready to move on to our new unit on the water cycle. But before I post any new lessons on the water cycle, I did notice that there's still many students who have not turned in their test for unit 6. So I'm not going to post a new lesson today, but instead I'm going to give everyone a chance to go back to the materials page, click on the black folder, and open up the study guide and then take your unit 6 final test. Again, there's still around half of you who did not take this test. It was due yesterday, but I'm letting you take it today. So please go and take this test so that once most people have turned it in, then we can move on to the water cycle unit starting this week. And I'm going to also quickly go over some answers on this test. I will give everyone a chance to retake it tomorrow. So I suggest you listen really carefully. This was a test worth many points. Remember, tests are 50% of your grade. So if you want to bring up your grade before your final grades are due in June, you can retake this test. I will allow you to retake it tomorrow. So first, right now, I'm going to go over the questions that many students missed. Again, most of you did a really great job, but if you want to retake it, I'm giving you a chance tomorrow. So number one, all day to number nine, most of you got it correct, so awesome job. And I saw that people needed help with number 10. So I'm going to give you the answer for number 10, and when you retake it tomorrow, you can get it correct for a higher score. So it says, when thermal energy is removed from liquid water by putting it in the freezer, the water, water particles will move slower because when you put water in a freezer it's losing thermal energy so they're going to slow down so this will decrease the average blank of each particle so the average kinetic energy of each particle will decrease since they're moving slower and if the kinetic energy decreases that means that the temperature of the water will also decrease now as the kinetic energy of the particles continues to blank continues to decrease the water will change states from a liquid, so it was first liquid, but it's going to change states from liquid to solid, and this is called freezing. So that was number 10. And then moving on, many of you did really well on the other problems, but we saw I saw we needed help on number 17. Number 17 says, to start cooking dinner, Ivan puts two identical pots of water on a stove to boil. The amount of water in each pot was the same, but one pot had a lid on it and the other one did not. So the pot of water with the lid, it was 24 degrees and then afterwards it became 75 degrees. And the pot of water without a lid, it was 22 degrees and it only heated up to 54 degrees. Now it says the next time Ivan boils water, what should he do to minimize? to decrease and slow down the rate of thermal energy transfer to the stove from the stove to the water. So in this question, he wants to minimize. He wants to slow down thermal energy from entering our water, our pot of water. To do that, he would want the final temperature to be smaller, to be lower. So the answer would be to use a pot of water without a lid. So do not put the lid on the pot of water. And then number 20, why do we wear sweaters in cold weather? Well, like we said before, in cold weather, thermal energy is going to leave your warm body. Remember, cold does not enter. Cold does not enter your body. Coldness cannot move. But instead, heat from your body is going to leave your body, making you feel cold. So what do, why do we wear sweaters? Well, we wear sweaters to slow down thermal energy transfer. You're trying to slow down thermal energy from leaving your body. And then last one that we need help on, 21. What material will best absorb electromagnetic waves from radiation? Well, we learned that 
dark paper, dark colors like black paper are going to absorb all the electromagnetic waves instead of reflecting them. All right, so that's the end of our review. And again, like I said, many of you did a really excellent job, but I'm still waiting on many students to turn in this test. And I'm also going to give um, students a chance to retake it tomorrow for a higher score so that you can raise up your grade. So today, right now, since I went over the test, um, those of you who still have not taken it, please go to the black folder and take this test. And those of you who already took the test, well, what should you do today? Well, those of you who already took the test, you can go through and check your grades and see what assignments you are missing and make sure that you submit everything for Unit 6 because we're moving on to Unit 7 and you don't want to still be having missing assignments from the previous unit. And if you want, you can also do your optional credit. So optional extra credit. So the deadline was yesterday, but I'm going to extend it to today. So if you have time today, you can still do your optional extra credit. The directions are in the discussion post right over here. And I got many submissions from different people and you all did such a wonderful job. So people posted their pictures, they wrote their explanations, and I gave them their scores. And I'm really proud to see all of these people who turned in their extra credit assignment. So really great job to those of you who did it. If you wanna do it, you still have time today. If you're done with all of these things, you did the missing work, you did your test, you did your extra credit, then today you can take a day of rest and then we will be resuming and starting a new lesson, a new unit tomorrow. All right, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you in tomorrow's video.